All right, today we're going to be talking about custom shapes using Unreal Engine 5's modeling tools to build procedural foliage landscapes. And as you can see here, what I've got here and what I've done is I've built all this foliage and everything procedurally. And I'm going to show you guys how I did that um, by using a custom box shape and converting that. So you can see here I've got this box brush right here and there's the box brush that I've built and it's a custom shape and we're going to go ahead and show you guys how I did that um, using a lot of the procedural tools that are available in Unreal. So the first thing we're going to do is, is I'm going to delete a lot of this stuff just so that we can go ahead and do this from scratch it's a lot of fun doing it from scratch. I'm just going to go here to my box brush and we're just going to go ahead and delete this. It may crash here, may not. Sometimes it does because it is in um, testing. We're going to go ahead and we are going to delete all of this just so we can start from scratch. So the first thing um, we need to do, and you know, I'm going to go over here and just kind of show you. All right, so we're just going to go out here into the opening out here, and we are going to switch into our brush editing view, and we're going to be using the pen tool. Now, the pen tool, um, you know, cannot be used um, in this view. It's actually got to be used in the top view. Okay, so we're going to go ahead here. I'm uh, just going to deselect. I'm just going to go out here in the middle of nowhere, and to use it, I'm just going to zoom into this area right here. And what's going to happen is you can actually switch your snapping if you want, but I'll just leave it at 10 right now, which is fine. And to start using it, and we're just going to start actually building a shape, and it's going to be a custom shape. So we're going to go here, and I'm just hitting spacebar. So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing spacebar. We're just going to create a nice custom shape here. I mean, I'm not going to do anything crazy fancy right now, but, you know, you can do kind of whatever you want. There we go, just create like a neat little spiral here. And then when you're done, you just hit the enter key. And then you're going to actually see your box right there. I'm going to get out of the brush editing mode. I'm going to go back into perspective. Just hit my F key on my keyboard here. And you can see there is my custom shape that I created, which is really nice. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale this. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. And there we go. So now I've scaled it up. And the reason why I'm just scaling it up, just so it has a bit of height to it. Because um, what we're going to do right now, which is the really, really neat thing about this, is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to scroll down here, and where it says Convert Actor, I'm going to click on Select Type, and then I'm going to actually convert it to a procedural foliage volume. There we go. And now it is a procedural foliage volume, which is really nice. I mean, Make sure it's selected. I'm going to go here now. You can also go back into brush editing. And now we can start editing this again if we want to. So I can go ahead and I can select the face. And I can, let's say I want to extrude it. I can go ahead and I can extrude it. So you still can go in and edit it. Um, but that's if, you know, I mean, you want to go in and, and make some modifications after, which is really, really nice. So let's go ahead quickly and then just kind of show you the overview of what needs to be done um, for this. So what we need to do is we need to actually create some static mesh objects. And to keep this a bit organized, all right, we're going to go ahead. I created a folder here called procedural and you can create folders in here. But for this, we won't. What you do is you go, uh, I'm just going to right click in here and go to foliage static mess foliage um, but first we're gonna actually start with a procedural foliage spawner that's what it's called new procedural we're just gonna leave it that name for now it's up to you if you want to change it that's fine but I'm gonna go ahead in here and create another one and we're gonna call that static mesh foliage and we're gonna call this grass because that's kind of what we're starting with I'm gonna double click that and it's going to open up a window. So the nice thing when you do this, it actually creates, uh, it has all these different settings. And we're going to go through some of these settings, which is really nice. And uh, when we start actually building our area, 
Okay, so I'm going to go here my content drawer. I am using the Divas grass pack for the grass because I really like the grass. Um, I'm going to grab this one, bring this in here. Uh, we'll close this down. I'm going to save this. And then what you do is, is you go to your procedural folio, your spawner, you double click, and you're going to add that element into the array. So you're going to go here. And then you're going to go ahead and find your grass, wherever it is. There it is, grass. Perfect. Now I'm going to hit save. Now, normally with a procedural foliage volume, what you would do is you would take this element and you would drag it in and it creates a box for you. And then you spawn that. But for this instance, we are actually not going to do that. This is where the, the change comes in, which, you know, is a little bit tricky, but it's there and it's hidden. Um, I wish there was a little more documentation on this, but finding this was great. So with my box brush that I converted to the procedural uh, foliage volume, you can see here in the outline it says procedural foliage volume, there's actually an area right here where it says foliage spawner. And you can use a drop down there and you can see it's got the procedural foliage volume that we created from here. So you can actually take this and drag it in if you want. Um, you can take this and drag that in. There we go. There we go. So now, using this box brush that we created, we can simulate that stuff. And for some reason, it is not simulating. And it's probably because my grass has a collision radius of 100. And that is kind of where the issue is. So I'm just going to put this to zero for now. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to hit resimulate. And then there we go. So now you can start seeing my grass start filling in from that area. So it's only filling in that area, which is really nice. So we have a, we have a smaller collision radius. And what we're going to do now is we're going to up it, up the initial seed density. Let's go to like five or something. And then we're going to minimize this. And then re-simulate. And now, obviously, it's going to take a lot longer. And there we go. So what's neat is, is there is our custom shape. So if you wanted to create a cool kind of custom shape, a custom logo or something, then definitely this is kind of how you do it if you want to create something really neat. Okay. So with that being said, and that kind of showing you the overview of the custom shape, what we're going to do now is delete that. There we go. And we're going to start building our environment over here. Okay. We're going to start building a really nice environment over here with some custom shapes, some custom attributes and stuff, and move along. So once again, we're going to go into the brush editing. Uh, we're going to grab the pen. We're going to go in the top view. And let's just zoom out here. Here we go. And what I want to do is I want to like fill pretty much this whole area here, okay, but with a custom kind of shape. And then I'm going to want to obviously remove from this area. I'm going to show you guys how to do that, so it's actually going to be pretty cool. So let's first go ahead and use the pen tool. So I'm going to zoom in into this area here, and I'm going to start drawing with the pen tool to kind of just give my boundary right now. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Just go ahead creating a really nice boundary. And we can go a little bigger if we want here. There we go. And then to complete the shade, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit enter. There we go. And then now it's created that nice shape there. Um, and that's just once again, creating this area and what's nice about this is you can create different areas different shapes so if i want i can create another shape over here another foliage volume over here which is really nice so i'm going to go ahead into my select mode go into my perspective and then of course i've got my box right there what i'm going to do is i'm going to scale that up okay there we go and I can scale it up after if I need to, but that's fine for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and convert this to my procedural foliage volume. And obviously it's called box brush. We can rename that to our, I'm just going to call it procedural, uh, da, da, da. procedural volume. 
and you can even call this, I'll call this main, just procedural volume main, there we go. And then once again, I can go down to my foliage spawner and I can grab that procedural foliage spawner that I had in here. And then we can just quickly hit re-simulate and then you're gonna see it's gonna put grass all in that area. Now this may take a while because it is a huge area as well as I haven't set up culling distance. I haven't set up certain certain things that um, would speed this up. So it is going to take a lot longer. And as well, it's going to take a huge hit in performance. So a huge, huge hit in performance here. Also too, the grass isn't as close as I'd like but I am definitely taking a huge hit in performance because you can see here I'm at 23 frames, um, which is not very, very good. And how we can fix that is I can go to my grass type right here and I can scroll down to cull distance. Um, so typically you want your starting to be around 100. I mean, zero is fine, but, and then I'll go to like, sure, like 3000. And then I'm gonna hit save. Let me just bring this so you guys can actually see that. The culling distance actually works in real time, which is really, really nice. So you can actually see there, um, if you want it to go even further, you can. So that's like at, what was that, 3,000? We can go to like 3,500. There we go. And then that's at 3,500 right there, which is really, really nice. Okay, so let's go through some of these settings and just kind of go through some of the stuff so that we can kind of make this a little better i'm gonna move this over here just a tiny bit and i usually work in a dual monitor so we can see some of the stuff so some of the things i'm noticing here is the grass just on kind of that edge right here um, not crazy about so what we can do here is on the um on the uh, on the slope angle what we can do is we can actually go ahead and change that so that this doesn't happen. So let's see what it's gonna look like at 35. So we have a zero angle, right, which is the min, and then we have a max of 35 degrees. Then we're gonna go ahead here, and then we're gonna hit re-simulate. Now, of course, this is gonna take a bit. So this is really good. Slope angle is really good. So like, for example, if you don't want trees being built at a certain angle, this is where you can control that. You can be like, you know what? No, I don't want any trees that are at like a 45 degree angle. All right, just to save here. And then there we go. So now we've actually removed a lot of that stuff. Okay, good. Now, the other thing I'm noticing right here is the grass itself, you know, not enough scale variation for me. So what I'd like to do actually is go down here to the growth uh, tab here and where it says procedural scale, uh, we have one to three. I'm gonna go one to like six and hit save and then minimize this and hit re-simulate. And just give that a second. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like I am using a lot of grass right now. And there we go. So now you're getting a lot, a lot more grass, which is really, really good. So you're getting like different variations, different sizes, which is really, really nice. And once again, what we can do is if you want the density up, we can definitely add that. But right now, I'm actually happy with that. That's actually really, really good. Um, it's going out pretty far, which is really nice. Um, as you can see, and then we can go into the different areas here and you can see all of that and we're getting a nice kind of like, it's not going down the slopes, but in certain areas it is, it's creating a really nice variation, which is really, really nice. All right, let's go on to another like little area here. What we're going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and we are going to add some more stuff in this area. We're going to add ferns. So I'm going to go ahead and go to foliage, static mesh foliage. We're gonna call this ferns and we're gonna open that up. Uh, let's make this bigger here and we're gonna go content and we're gonna go to, I believe it's under mega scans. We did have mega scans, 3D plants, 
and we have a common fern. Um, there's three different variations here, which is really nice. I'm just going to grab the first one and drag that in. Perfect. I'm going to hit save. Um, and then once again, we're going to hit simulate first to see what it does. I already kind of know what it's going to do, uh, but I want to show you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and hit re-simulate. It's going to take a bit. And when it finishes, we're probably not going to notice very much. Like you will, but it's not going to be very crazy because we are definitely looking at a very big collision radius of 100, right? So the 100 there is very, very big. So I'm looking around for the ferns and I can't even really see them. Like, where are they? They're there, but we can't see them. <laughs> because of the fact that we've done the collision radius so crazy and as well the grass kind of takes priority um, over the ferns so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to go to the ferns collision radius and we're going to bring we'll bring down the collision radius and the shade radius to about 50. Um, as well as i want the scale to get a little bigger as well so i'm going to hit six here and then i'm going to hit save and then we're going to close, minimize that, and hit re-simulate. And let's see if we get a little more kind of variation as well. Let's see what happens. So this should give us some good, good feedback. Try to see where the ferns are. Oh, well, silly me. I forgot to do one thing. See, this is one thing where you're like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, so <laughs> back in the actual procedural fo foliage volume, we have to add it as an element. Oh, my goodness. We have to add it as an element. That was my bad. All right, we forgot to add it to the array there. And then now we can hit resimulate. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. Here we go. And then there they are. There we go. So now we're getting some of those ferns in there, which is really, really nice. Uh, what we probably could do actually is lower the radius a bit more because I'd like to see them a little bit closer together because usually ferns grow, when they are growing, they do grow like closer together. Um, so what we're gonna do is go here to our ferns and we're gonna bring down the collision radius and the shade radius to 10. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And essentially the, the collision radius and the shade radius just is like means how close they're going to be together and how close they are going to be to other foliage. Because um, you can see here that what happens is around kind of the fern, it kind of creates a radius around there. And we're going to go ahead and re-simulate. And now we should start getting bunches of them together. That's kind of what I want to see. We start start getting clumps of them together. And just give it a second to do that. And then there we go. So now we're starting to get a little bit more clumps together because we brought the radius down. What's nice is we got the different scales going, which is really, really good. And it's not too much where like the grass, the grass just really hits our FPS like hard. Um, but now we got these nice ferns going on. Um, we are once again, though, getting kind of some in areas where they probably shouldn't be going. Um, so to fix that, once again, that's kind of the slope angle. And I think it was 35 that we used in the grass. So we should probably use 35 as well for that. I'm going to save that. Um, but now what we're going to actually do is, is start adding some different foliage types. We're going to actually go in and add some rocks, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and add some rocks. I'm going to create a new 
uh, foliage type, static mesh, and we're going to call this rocks. And we're going to go ahead and go to 3D assets here. Um, I don't remember which one it is. I have two sandstones in here. Okay, this is the one that, yeah, I downloaded this one. And then I went ahead and I downloaded this, another sandstone just so that um, looked a little nicer to me. All right, so we're going to go into the rocks here. Let's make this bigger. We're going to go in the content drawer here to this sandstone right here and drag that in. Perfect. Uh, let's hit save. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change a little bit of the collision radius um, as well as we're going to change a little bit of the procedural scale just so that we get a different variation in size. And let's go ahead and save that. And then, of course, go back to our procedural foliage volume. And we're going to go ahead and add that, uh, which was the rocks. Where was the rocks? Here we go. Perfect. And hit save. And then we're going to go ahead and hit re-simulate. And let's see how this looks. Now, the rocks, I'm not too concerned about angles and stuff. Uh, I don't mind them being a little bit more on an angle. And then there we go. Look at that. So now we're getting a little bit more clusters together, which is really, really nice. So the other thing that's happening actually is in our water area, we're starting to get, um, especially down by kind of like the bottom here, where really, you know, nobody's going to see that. So what we're going to do first, that's actually looking really, really good. I may want to make the rocks a bit smaller so we're going to do that after but the first thing we're going to actually do i'm going to go to the top view okay perfect and what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to actually go into brush editing let me deselect everything and i'm going to go ahead and go to the pen tool and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create right here another shape and you guys are going to see what i'm about to do in a second this is why it's so important like to have these custom shapes you know i'm hoping maybe one day um there's going to be a spline tool of some sort that we're able to do this with but right now this works really really well so i'm very happy i'm very happy with this which actually just it, it works very very well let me go back to perspective i'm going to scale this up this one here, I don't need to scale too, too much. There we go. And we're going to convert this. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually convert this to a procedural foliage blocking volume. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to convert that to a procedural foliage blocking volume. There we go. It just converted that. Um, what's really nice here, you do have a density fall off if you want to use that. Um, we're just going to rename this to blocking volume. So you can add from here a procedural foliage blocking volume. But once again, it just comes in as a square. And now what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to select my other um, procedural volume. And I'm going to go ahead and re-simulate. I'm going to make those rocks a bit smaller. So once again, we're doing a really, really big area here. So there's a lot, a lot going on. And if I want to speed this up too, like if I like the grass and where it's at, I can actually remove just the grass. And now you can see here that under the water, there's nothing being spawned, which is really, really nice. Okay, because the blocking volume is actually getting it. I'm actually going to scale that up a tiny, tiny bit more because I saw that it wasn't. There we go. It wasn't going all the way down. Now it is. Okay, perfect, perfect, good. Yeah, so if you want to speed like this up, which I'm going to do is from the array, 
right in here. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to delete the grass for now because that's going to save me when I'm building this stuff, which is really, really nice. So I'm going to go to the rocks. I want the scale to be a bit better. So I'm going to go 0 0.25 uh, to 0.3. Save that. And did the collision radius. Let's take down the shade radius to about 25 and see what happens. We're going to go ahead and select this now and we're going to re-simulate. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. So now we're getting a little bit more clusters going on, which is really, really nice. We could even bring that even closer, but I like how we're getting the different shapes now. Um, we can bring that down even further. Let's do this to 25. Let's bring down the collision radius to 25. So now that's going to uh, did I resimulate. That's going to bring them even closer together. Yes, there we go. So now we're getting more clumps. We're getting the different sizes. Um, the collision radius obviously means the colliding of itself, which is really, really nice. There we go. Perfect. Good. That's looking really, really good. And you can see how fast it's everything spawned in once I remove the grass from that, which is really, really nice. Okay, let's go ahead now. We're going to add now another procedural foliage. We're going to go into the foliage, static mesh, and we're going to call this, oh, what was the? It was like a plant of some sort. Plant. Let's open that up. Let's go to the bird of paradise, it's called. So we have a whole bunch of these birds of paradise. Let's, uh, let's bring this one in. There we go. Bird of paradise. Uh, we're going to bring collision volume 25, 25. Actually, the shape radius will bring that to zero. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't want this on crazy angles. So let's do this around 25 and hit save. And let's minimize and then we're going to hit simulate. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh. I have to add it to the array once again. My bad. We go here, add to the array, and then we had, uh, I believe it was just called plant, static mesh, and save. Here we go, and then re-simulate. And then there we go. Now we're starting to get some of these in there. Um, da -da 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 -da. So we're adding a little bit of variation, but the only thing is I think there's too many. And how we fix that is we're going to go back to plants and we're going to change the shade radius. Let's change that to 25 actually and see what that does. Now let's hit resimulate. It may be too much. I may go higher on the numbers. Did it not? Yeah, the collision radius is too high. So you know what? Actually, let's go back in. I believe the collision radius is too high. Let's go 50. It's still too much, actually. That's yeah, still way too much. So let's go back here. We're going to do 75. And this will do 50. And then change that. And we see, no, let's see how it is. All right, perfect. So now, once again, that's looking a bit better. My only thing with it is the size scale. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to go into the size and the growth, and we're going to play with the growth. And I don't want it to be three. I want it to be more like two, save. And I'm going to up this a bit, actually. Let's up this back to 100. I think it was 100 to start with, save. And then we're going to re-simulate. There we go. That's a bit better. There we go. That's looking really, really good. That's looking really, really good. Awesome. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So look, it just shows how quick we can build like a little area here and get this working. And now for one of the final ones, we're going to go to procedural. We're going to add a new foliage type. And we're going to call it a palm tree. There we go. Go in here. Go here. I'm using, once again, the DVIS 
pack here. Uh, let's add a palm tree. You guys can find a palm tree somewhere. Let's save that and let's add it to our array. So we're gonna go here to the palm tree, palm, save, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit re-simulate. And there we go. So now we've just added crazy, crazy amount of trees. <laughs> but once again, we got some weird, weird angles going on that I, I mean, we got to remove. And then we're going to play with the scales a bit as well. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the um, angle. We're going to change that to about a 30 degree angle. We'll hit save. The scale, we're going to go from a 0.5 to a 5. Hit save. And the collision radius is fine. Let's save that. And then let's hit re-simulate. There we go. So now we're getting a lot of different variations going on, which is really, really nice. A lot of different areas. And we've created this nice kind of little oasis here. Um, you can see we're starting to get actually some stuff in here. Um, and that's because our foliage volume is, you know, probably didn't go wide enough, but it's fine for now. And we can go ahead and you can fix that. But we are getting definitely some really, really nice variations in here. This little palm oasis as I would call it. And then let's go ahead now and we can add our grass back in. Okay, first thing to do is always save, always, always save, um, especially when you're doing some like big, big stuff like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and find our grass, which is right here. We're gonna hit save. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit re-simulate. This is where it is definitely going to change a lot because you have the grass because of how the collision radius is, you're going to notice that a lot of things are actually going to disappear. There we go. Um, and the reason why that happens is because the grass, because of the collision radius of the way it is, the grass actually takes priority um, over other kind of objects. But oh, this is looking really, really good. This is looking really, really good. And once again, you can go in and you can add different variations and different things. Um, we can go ahead and right now you can see the grass is like very sparse now. So we can actually go ahead and we can change that a bit. So if we actually go to grass and right now the initial seed density is five. We can actually change it to like seven. And what that's going to do is it's going to up the spawn rate and it's going to up just it's going to fill it in more. But when it does that, you're going to notice some things are going to move around. They're going to move. And let's just wait. We are adding way, way more grass. Three, two, one. Will it crash? Will it not? We shall see. There we go. And there we go. So you can see when adding more grass, it starts removing more and more stuff. Some of the trees, you can see it starts because of the collision radius on a lot of this stuff. So what you got to do then is go into the palm trees, for example. So in the palm trees, what you may want to do um, is go to that procedural shape here, the palm tree, and then play with the shape radius, right? So you can actually like go down to like, let's say, sure, let's go to 50, hit save. And that should um, bring a lot of that stuff back. So you should, the grass should get a little closer because you're about a hundred units. So let's see what happens. And it's about priority, like that shape radius is about priority, right? So when you're getting closer to the objects, if they start kind of getting in within each other, it actually, one takes priority over the other, if that makes sense. So 
So the lower those numbers, what's going to happen is, is that then the closer they are going to get together, but one will take priority over another because of, of how they are. And then there we go. This is actually looking really, really good. This is looking really, really good. So there's other things that you could do here, um, which we'd even touch base on. We can fade the grass out over a certain distance. We can um, definitely play with more of, you know, more of the numbers, more of the features, things like that, seed density, etc. cetera. Um, but I think for, for this video, that is kind of it for now. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the, you know, I mean, the comment section. Um, and of course, don't forget to hit up that subscribe. I'm going to try and do more Unreal Engine 5 videos in the future. Um, you know, I do play a lot of video games. Overwatch 2 is coming out soon, and uh, there's a lot of different stuff. But as well, what I'm excited for is the Fortnite Creative 2.0, uh, which will definitely allow us to build kind of these environments and do these type of things so that we can play and create kind of our own games, which is going to be really fun. So for that right now, guys, thank you very much.